one final look at the gas production of a charcoal fire. I'm running at about 127 watts blower power to do this much gas. So not bad. This thing is kicking off a tremendous amount of heat. Far more heat than wood. I'm breaking the sweat to stand here. I need to get away from it. The, uh, I don't know if you can see that big chunk of tar falling off of my coil there. Those Creo shot sticks definitely are working. I am happy about that. Man, that is so hot. It's like a forge down in there. I haven't noticed any slagging yet, but at the end of the run, I will check into that. I do have a carbon monoxide meter running over there. It is showing no gas yet, but this is a negative pressure combustion system, so leaks don't matter to me. Thank goodness. That's one of the reasons why I went with the negative pressure combustion system in the first place, was to mitigate any problems that may be caused by the leaks in the system. And I didn't want a draft operated burner. I wanted something with more power to burn wetter wood. Those are the coils. Running at about 187 degrees on the temperature. For now, I just got this fan sitting here because this thing's still in its test phases. Luckily, this system, or this coil, can generate more heat than my system can handle. I was worried that the coil would be too small. I am so pleased that this thing's far too powerful for this radiator and this blower setup even. So I lucked out. I was going to put a coil in this first section of the tubing, the hottest area, but I was worried that combustion that normally takes place inside of that tube would be extinguished by the cooled off environment. Because sometimes fire shoots down that tube and I want those gases to burn. I do not want to cool that fuel stream off at all until all the smoke is combusted. So that is why I did not stick the coil in the hottest section. I was going to do a coil in this section and this section, but ended up just talking myself into putting it in there. stuff just seems to burn forever too. That's what I like about the charcoal. So I'm on this kick where I'm thinking about just going out into the woods and grabbing all the wood off the ground that I can find. Turning it into charcoal and then using that for a heat source because wood sucks. You have to dry that crap. It's hard to cut. I mean, it would be so much better to just turn this crap into charcoal. It dries it out immediately. This stuff's been sitting around for a year. It's just not practical. I think I'm gonna go my own path on this whole heating thing and just find a great way to make charcoal. Because I am just amazed at how well this thing is doing. I'd have to be running at 300, 250 watts be cranking that kind of heat on some average wood. Been doing plenty of testing. This wood right here, these little blocks at that size, 
require a tremendous power output on my behalf to get that stuff to burn. Not only that, but it's extremely tarry flame. Uh, the smoke that comes out of the other end of the exhaust is, is excessive. Tar literally drips out of my blower on the other end. We're at 135 watts of blower power here. Um, the total power of the system is, let me just do some quick. So I'm at 447 watts to run that fan on high, that pump on high, and that blower at 135 watts. So definitely not bad. I'm getting about 5,000 watts of heat for 400 watts of power. I did the calculations on this and determined the flow rate of the device, considered the volume, and the calculations show that this thing changes itself out once every two minutes, I think it was. It's 4.6 liters and I was at about two liters per minute on the pumping. So yeah, about two minutes and it was running at a 10 degree temperature difference and with the or with the 50 degree temperature difference I'm sorry between the hot and cold junction the math described a 3,500 watt heater at I believe it was 100 200 degrees or so so when that water is at 200 degrees the thermodynamic equations say that this thing is running at about 3,500 watts um, and so the 5,000 was a little bit of a jump there but I need to redo the math because I need to check the flow rate again and the temperature junction again so I do know for a fact that mathematically this thing is hovering in the 3,500 watt range which makes sense I mean the amount of heat that's coming out of this thing versus this this is a 1200 watt heater and when you feel the air thrust coming out of that over there versus this and you feel the heat coming out of this for comparison it does feel about like it's three times the heat so the experiential is real close to the imperial 